Hello and welcome back to another episode of the News You Missed Recap. This is the Pokemon edition of the News You Missed Recap, so the weekly News You Missed is still to come. This one just focuses on the Pokemon Conference, so I'm recapping everything that happened there as quickly as possible. The conference was around 30 minutes long, and it's long, drawn out, and wasn't exactly a presentation for everyone to see, just more like a keynote to a lot of board of directors, uh, people who are invested in the company, staff things like that. Things that have to happen in a company, but because it's Game Freak, Pokemon, the Pokemon Company, Nintendo, a lot of big names, they allow a lot of other people to see it to generate a little bit of hype for the company. It's good stuff, but a lot of people don't want to listen to 30 minutes of that, so I'm here to recap it for you. So first, I want to talk about Detective Pikachu's success. Toho was apparently invested in that film. They also casually dropped that there's a new Godzilla movie as well, so that's probably because of Toho's investment. And talked about Pokemon, the first movie being remade this summer as well. That's kind of a big hitter topic that they wanted to talk about. But piggybacking on Detective Pikachu's success, there is a Detective Pikachu 2 that's going to be coming out on the Switch, and it's going to have a different ending than what the movie actually had. So this is going to be a completely different experience. Now here's the thing, if you had Detective Pikachu on the 3DS, you're going to have to buy a Switch to get Detective Pikachu if that's what you wanted. I know this is a side spin-off, and not everyone and their mom got it, but for those who really, really enjoyed it and only have a 3DS, I, I'm sorry, man. You just gotta move on with the uh, ages, they're making it for the Switch. So that's a big distinction. They did not show gameplay, did not allude to anything other than the fact that the ending will be different than the movie. So there you go. Cultural Pokemon Center was talked about with massive Mewtwo statue. This is a new place that's gonna have kind of a black theme and it looks pretty cool. Very much emulating the Detective Pikachu movie where they had a tank with Mewtwo in it. Again, trying to avoid spoilers, but everybody knows Mewtwo's in the movie, so it's not really shocking that there'd be a tank with Mewtwo in it. It's pretty iconic, and again, um, Pokemon, the first movie being remade with Mewtwo in the tank. So that's pretty cool, massive Mewtwo statue. I would love to see that personally. Uh, Pokemon Quest is getting massive updates as well. This is a very big mobile game that came out. Again, another side entry to the series of Pokemon, but a free to play one and a good one at that. They're getting PVP things, uh, tons of different updates as well, not just PVP, but uh, they were talking about launching it in China and making a big push towards China. So that's cool. That means uh, the Pokemon company is expanding into one of the uh, largest countries. I don't know how well it'll go for them, but hopefully it works out. Pokemon Home is one of the biggest announcements that we received. This is going to be working with all of the mainline game series that we currently have. So it's going to also work with Pokemon Bank. So let me fill you in. Basically, it's going to allow you to transfer Pokemon from Pokemon Bank, Pokemon Go, Let's Go, and Sword and Shield, and into one giant area. They're trying to make it what Pokemon Bank was at one point in time for most of the games, but with the addition of Pokemon Go on the mobile and Let's Go. As before, you weren't able to do stuff with Pokemon Go and Let's Go. Instead, you were relegated to the mainline series alone for Pokemon Bank. That's cool. I really appreciate that. That means the Pokemon that you were able to transfer to Bank will not die out, and a lot of things will be able to continuously be transferred into the new series of games. That probably means a lot of transferring. It's going to take a long time to get all of these Pokemon from these previous games over to the new Sword and Shield games, if that's what you want to do. But it's cool. That means you don't have to start from scratch catching every single Pokemon again. You can trade online also, and nearby, or with friends, and that's supposed to be launching in 2020. So I'm pretty excited to see that. That's really, really cool. A lot of people were worried that uh, Pokemon Bank wasn't going to be coming back, and it was just going to be relegated to 3DS days. But hey, I guess not. So that's important. Another weird thing that they were talking about was called Pokemon Sleep. This is a game being made by the same developers as Magikarp Jump, so there's that. I mean, they did a pretty good job on Magikarp Jump, so I'm not too worried about it. Anyways, it uses time spent sleeping to affect the gameplay. They didn't really go in-depth with it. Again, conference, not exactly trailer material here. But they said the concept for the players was to enjoy waking up every morning and create different gameplay via that. That is going to be launching 2020 as well. But separate from that, Nintendo and Niantic are also working on a new device to incorporate sleep it's similar to Pokemon Plus 
it's a device very similar to that where you can set it down and it will track the information about your sleep with an accelerometer sent to your phone and that way you'll get updates like that. I'm sure that they'll be able to incorporate things like watches as well as programs that do that also so it's not necessarily surprising that they're moving towards that direction or in that market. Again, Japan is very very much into a healthy mindset and a healthy body so this really probably is going to sell very well in Japan more so than it will in an America, but I'm still excited to see what they can actually do with it. Playing a game while you're sleeping is pretty crazy, or at least wanting to get up and play a game. I mean, there's some old games that, and hey, when I wake up, I'll sign in and I'll get a bonus reward, but I don't know, man. We'll see what they have to come up with. Pokemon Masters was a big ticket item here. This was a massively new game that was announced. This is a new smartphone based game which was based on the games with Ken Sigamari's key art shown to display what the game was actually going to be about. You can look at the art and you can see that this is exactly what they're going for here. But this is going to be a mobile focused game with your favorite trainers and their partner Pokemon from the main series games which will appear with unique attacks. So for example, I'm quite sure you're going to see Pokemon Trainer Red with Pikachu. In the kind of trailer demonstration that they gave, it wasn't exactly a trailer, it was a very short demonstration. They showed trainers like Misty, uh, they showed Blue, and their corresponding Pokemon. And that's pretty cool. You're going to have 3v3 battles with multiple attacks and strategy involved, and it's going to be late this year, which is awesome. I could absolutely go for another mobile game. Now this was the big ticket game that I wanted to talk about because it's very very similar to current games that we have on the mobile marketplace, which is awesome. When you build off an idea that already exists, you usually get something good, and this company has yet to fail me when it comes to a game that is terrible or anything like that, uh, outside of a, a couple, couple blips. Hey you Pikachu, let's not ever bring that game into existence again. Uh, anyways, the point is, I'm not going to be shocked at all if this is going to be a great mobile version of what a lot of people have said. They just want a game where it incorporates all of the regions, but at the very least you'll get an experience like what you would get at Battle Tree with these top tier trainers, but you won't have to verse small time trainers first to play against them. I don't know. Like I said, it seems very, very similar to a lot of mobile game variants that already exist. So it could be going down the path where you're going to be using these guys as heroes, as unlockable characters where you have to spend currency or earn currency or points battling and defeating certain characters to unlock them and then use them yourself and their partner Pokemon. But yeah, like I said, we'll have to see more details. Very limited details were given other than uh, Brock ripping off his clothes and showing his rock hard abs. Uh, Brock, mascot for Triple X Pokemon. That's all I have to say about that, and we're going to move on. The final thing that they hit on was Pokemon shirts. These are more professional Pokemon shirts. Now, hang on there. I know a lot of people are saying, wow, shirts, very exciting stuff. But no, listen, this is pretty cool because if you have a professional workplace with professional work attire, you know, you can't be just sewing on patches of Pokemon and being like, hey, look, 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 man, I'm a fan of Pikachu. People are just going to look at you like you're weird, man. But when you have a very, very professional styled uh, shirt that you can wear that would be accepted in an office environment. It's awesome. This is a great way to show that you are very very into Pokemon or interested in gaming in general while still remaining professional and this is going to be custom tailored and you're going to be able to order them internationally. They said originally that this was relegated to certain regions of Japan but now they are going to be opening it up worldwide. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen. That's the conference recap. All the big things in less than 30 minutes so you don't have to watch the whole conference but if you would like to you can and during the conference with the interpreter pausing to translate and uh, kind of stuttering here and there not exactly the best experience so I tried to recap all of the big points here for you if you guys did enjoy this video I would greatly appreciate it if you just liked and shared it let people know I exist as the best free way to support me I also have patron you can check me out on my socials Twitter and discord and of course you can subscribe here to now Never miss an episode of this and always stay caught up on the news. Now, I've been your host, Pro Mario, and I'm signing out. As always, good gaming, God bless, and I hope to see you out there in the future, Pokemaniacs. I'll definitely be recapping any Pokemon news coming up.